Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for joining. How you doing today? Uh, this is episode number four of my Luminar 2018 tutorial series, and this episode is all about layers. For me, one of the main things that drew me to Luminar and Aurora, frankly, uh, the first time was the layers function. Uh, while a lot of people edit photos in Lightroom, you have to go to Photoshop to get layers, and a lot of, a lot of people I've found don't want to go to Photoshop, including me, um, and that's one of the things I love about it. It gives you unbridled flexibility. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. You can add a new sky, you can add a texture, you can merge different things, and you can get really creative. You could even add a watermark, for example. So I'll go through a couple of examples here and sort of talk about the layers functionality. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you're in Luminar, uh, and I've got this photo here, to get to layers, just make sure you're in the filters panel, which is right there. And then these two little stacked boxes, that's your layers panel. And so layers, as I said, gives you a lot of flexibility. I'll walk through a couple of different ideas and try to cover uh, what maybe uh, some questions that you might have about layers. So let's say I have this photo and I wanna add some filters. So I'm gonna add filters. I'm gonna say Accent AI, black and white, and uh, structure and tone, right? So let's just say I got some filters. Converted to black and white, that looks cool. Um, I'm gonna add the Accent AI, kinda helps with the light. I'm gonna add some structure to bring up some detail. And I'm gonna change the contrast, uh, maybe up the smart tone a little bit. Yeah, maybe not that much. Take down some of the highlights and the whites because the sky's kind of um, bright, I guess. Uh, and there you go. So here's a before and after. Just kind of a simple um, conversion to black and white. And so here's where layers comes in. I love this. So let's say I like the photo, uh, which I do. This is Neuschweinstein Castle in Germany, but it was crappy light. I was there late after or mid afternoon, and I wasn't going to be back to this spot. And so I, you take the photo, right? You always take the photo, even if the light's not great, because you might do something different and artistic with it. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. So again, make sure your layers uh, panel is open, and I'm going to add a layer. And you have a choice here: a new adjustment layer, a new image layer, or a stamped layer. Um, I'm going to do an image layer. So I'm going to say OK. And then I've got this weathered cement texture from my texture pack. I'm gonna click open, and then I'm gonna stick that texture on top. And now you can see that there's a base layer, which is the castle photo, and a weathered cement layer, which is my texture. So here's where uh, you, you have a decision to make, right? So a lot of times what I would do is come in here and just take the opacity down. So basically, this, the top layer at 100% is all you're gonna see, so you gotta basically clear up that window so you can see through to the photo underneath, right? That's what the opacity slider is doing. So 25% looks pretty good, right? Now the other idea, and this is one of the cool features of layers, is you have blend modes. So you can say, I wanna change the blend mode. Maybe I just wanna to go to overlay, right? A bit more intense, but you could also now adjust the opacity. So I could come in here and say, I changed the blend mode, and now I'm gonna reduce the opacity. Um, or you could choose a different blend mode. Maybe you want to choose, let's say, screen, right? A little too white. Maybe you want to try multiply. Going to be too dark, right? Um, and so the blend modes is a really powerful capability of layers. And by the way, you can do blend modes on filters. We talked about that in the filter video. Um, I'm just going to experiment with a couple more while we're hanging out. I'm going to see what that does. All right, that looks terrible. So I'm going to go back to overlay. That's generally my favorite and then I'm gonna reduce the opacity. So let's say I like that. And now you could easily add filters here and just say, hey, I'm gonna stack some more filters and do some more stuff. But if I've got it with the blend mode and the opacity percent that I like, and I don't know if I'm gonna like the next edits, this is where I'll add another layer. So I'll say, I'm gonna add a new layer, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer, and that's gonna give me the ability to go add some filters without touching the texture layer that I already added. So maybe I wanna come over here and say, hey, let's try some split toning, and maybe I'm gonna to try tone again, and maybe some clarity and dehaze. And, and to be honest, I'm kinda of making the filter choices up. I'm just playing around. So I don't know how this is gonna look, but we're about to find out. Um, so with split toning, I'm just gonna sort of increase the tones to make it a little bit more vintage-y kind of sepia. And so you can kinda of see what that did, right? So there's the before, and the after, so I think that works. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast, and I wanna increase the smart tone because I don't wanna darken it too much by adding that contrast. Clarity, uh, dehaze, I'm just kinda jacking around to see how these look. The texture I think looks pretty good. Now, here's the thing, you can go back to a previous layer, 
And now that I've seen what the texture looks like, I might say, well, maybe I want to try it more like 57%. And now I go back up to the layer I'm on and the texture has been reduced accordingly. By the way, if you didn't know this, you can also reduce, hey, there's an update, remind me later. That's pretty cool. It's already getting updated. Thanks, MacFun, Skyloom. Um, okay, so now that I've uh, made changes to this layer, I could also come in here and say, hey, you know, I want to maybe take that opacity down. Now that's going to reduce the intensity of every filter on this layer, right? So um, if the texture is too strong and the color is too strong, you can just kind of reduce it and you can sort of see how that's impacting the layer. And so that's what I like about layers. Lots of flexibility, the ability to go in and change opacity, blend modes, just mess around for like a better word. Because at this point, when you're sticking a texture on a photo, you're in the realm of creating art anyway. This isn't a, a science experiment or you know, you're not baking a cake where you gotta follow directions. Get in there, have fun, and just for lack of a better word, jack around with some stuff and see what happens. I do that a lot, and that's how I come up with some stuff that I come up with. And sometimes, it, believe me, I got real dogs. Um, but a lot of times I come up with something, I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool, and I like it. So let's say I got all these filters, and let's say I want to add another filter, you know, uh, I don't know, soft glow, right? And um, I'm just going to stick that amount on here, and it kind of softens up the photo. Maybe I'll darken it. Maybe I'll warm it up a little bit. Um, and again, on and off filter, you can kind of see what it does. So I'm getting all these filters here. And sometimes I might, um, you know, I've got all these layers, and this is where like stamped layers come into play. So you might want to come over here to the layers panel, and you can just say create a new stamped layer. And let me show you what that does. Give that a second to go ahead and merge. And basically it's sticking all your layers together and making a copy of it that sits on top. And so you might use this if you're at the point where you're saying, I like everything I've done and I kind of want to save it, but I still want to go experiment. So you can create this stamped layer and it's going to sit on top of everything that you've got. And so there you go. Now all the other stuff, these layers are saved underneath it. Nothing's happened, but I've now got a stamped layer. So it's a great opportunity just to say, I kind of want to stick all my edits together and have a file, which is the stamped layer. And I just want to have it because I don't want to go back and mess with these. I'm kind of done. Now this might be where you go and say, I'm going to save in the native format and save it as a Luminar file on your desktop to think about it and come back later. Um, but that's what a stamped layer does. Now I'm gonna delete that. Um, another thing that you might wanna do is go over here and you can say merge all visible layers. And again, it's sorta of got a chug through, but I just stuck everything together in a single file. So the stamped layer is a new layer sitting on top of all your existing layers. The merge layer is sticking it all together in a single layer. Maybe your layers panel is five, seven, nine, ten layers deep, and you're like, hey, it's visually overwhelming. I need to get rid of that. I'm going to create a merge layer, stick it all together because I know for sure I like this look, um, and I want to save it, and I'm not going to change anything that's on this layer or below it. Now, you could go add new layers and build upon it if you wanted to. So let me pause for a second, undo that. Okay, so I just went to undo, just file undo, and I dropped that merge layer and I got back all my basic stuff. Now the other thing that you can do is create a rasterize layer. So you might go to current layer, and by the way, you can do this on any layer. You have all these different options. You can hide the layer, you can delete it, you can rasterize it, which I'll get to in a second. You can create a dupe. You can just change the name if you want to. Uh, create you know presets out of it. You can change the blend mode. You've got all these different commands, but rasterize layer. Uh, basically, if I want to rasterize the layer, watch what happens over here in the filter panel. It's just going to take this layer and stick everything sort of together and collapse everything. So if for some reason you've got a bunch of layers and a lot of different filters on a layer, if you rasterize the layer, it, you know, if, if, if you want to free up memory, for example, it's going to use less memory if you've rasterized the layer. It's going to collapse them into a single sort of so layer, you and you're there's going to be the rasterized shape. layer. You can see all my filters are gone because it basically, basically collapsed them all into this layer. And so that's something to use, as I said, if you're feeling like the system's running a little sluggishly, you want to speed it up, rasterize the layer. It collapses all the filters, and it basically says, here's the image layer. Um, yeah, less memory and runs faster and it cleans up the filter panel. 
So that's another option. And to be honest, these aren't things I use a lot. These are just tools that may or may not be helpful to you. I just kind of want to go through them. So I'm going to undo that as well. I'm going to say edit, undo layer, rasterize, and I'm going to sort of uncollapse that. And there you go. I'm back to my layer. So that's a quickie on layers. Um, and again, you can just keep stacking them. I don't know what the limit is. I feel like I read that it is 19 layers. I've never gone beyond six or seven. And that's really only if I'm getting kind of crazy and doing some crazy sort of artistic stuff. Um, but at that point, that'd be a good time to collapse layers, merge them, or rasterize them in order to sort of uh, reduce the system strain on having so many things to keep track of. So now there's another idea for layers, and that's replacing skies. Let me give you a quick example of that. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back. So um, the other thing about layers is you can add a new image layer, um, like I did with the texture. But in this case, I want to add a new image layer, and I'm going to go find a sky. So let me get a sky here. If they're in my textures, uh, oops, here we go, clouds and skies. Now I've done this on other videos, so you've probably seen this before. Uh, and I'm going to do a really quick job because I'm actually going to work on a tutorial and I've got four different ways to show you to put a new sky on a photo. So that's coming later. It's going to be probably after this uh, series of videos in this tutorial series. So um, it's coming. Just I got I to gotta get to it. Um, okay, so here's another uh, example of using layers. So I added a new, a new sky and to turn this layer off, which I could have shown you on the last uh, photo and I didn't think about it. Turn the layer off to see the base layer and turn it back on. Here I'm just going to use a brush and I'm just going to uh, increase my uh, brush size. You can see that I'm in paint and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to do this really quickly. So I'm not going to go closely along the horizon line. In my subsequent video I will show you techniques for making a cleaner horizon. Uh, I overshot that so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do some erasing and again, this is pretty quick for demonstration purposes, um, but that's an idea. Um, you can see the mask, right? You can kind of see where that is and done. So that's where I would use a new image layer uh, as part of the layers function to add a new sky. Now you could also put this in with the gradient mask uh, instead of the brush. Um, and so that's two of the ways and there's two more. I'll get to those as I said, excuse me, in another video. But then when I add a new sky, here's what I do. I go add a new adjustment layer, and this is where I start sticking presets and things like that. So let me see here. I'm going to do this. This is actually like a portrait preset, but it looks pretty good. Now, again, I admit, you know, a little messy around the uh, horizon line. There are ways to fix that with the brush and just to go slower, which I didn't take the time to do. But this is where I take advantage of layers after adding a new sky, and I'll come in and say, hey, I need to go add a preset because if you turn this layer off, the sky, the tones and the colors don't really match the foreground. Uh, I'll turn off the sky layer and you can see this was shot, you know, broad daylight, right? So I added a sunset sky, but the light, um, sort of the light or luminosity, if you will, of the foreground doesn't match the sky. And it still doesn't totally match the sky, but this is... Um, something that I would do. So added a preset, I would probably go get another layer and I'm going to say add adjustment layer and I'm going to get a filter. I'm going to start with adjustable gradient and all I'm going to do is go to the bottom and I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit. You can set the orientation if you'd like to. I'm going to collapse it down into this area and all I want to do is drop the exposure and maybe warm it up a little bit something like that. It's not a massive change. There's the before. A little too bright on the sunflowers doesn't look like sunset light and after. A little bit better. And so I didn't really have a plan with this photo to be honest. I'm kind of winging it on this sky replacement. Uh, the techniques are the same. I'm just not taking my time to go really slow to get it accurate. Uh, I will do that in a subsequent video. I just want to demonstrate the power of layers. And there's the before and there's the after. Again, quick edit. You know, I missed some spots, but the point is use the layers function to, if you want to replace the sky, replace the sky, paint it in, add a preset, or just add some adjustments. It doesn't have to be a preset. I did that because it's kind of quick to get me to a specific look. Um, and then I usually do another layer, which may be another preset or some individual filters to do touch up. But that's how you can quickly use the layers functionality to create a uh, entirely different photo with a new sky on it. And so that's some of the power of layers. There's a lot of things you can do, but to me what comes to mind initially 
is replacing skies and adding textures and the different blend modes and some of the tricks with rasterizing and merging visible layers and all that. So that's a primer on layers and layers functionality in Luminar 2018. I hope that it's helpful. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like. Don't hesitate to um, leave a comment. I love to hear uh, feedback. And if you have ideas or things you want to share or things you want me to explore, I'm always reading all those. I try to respond to all the comments. So thanks for doing that. And hit that subscribe button. i got plenty more stuff coming. And the last favor is you know, share it with your friends. So that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. And adios.